cell. Introduction All organisms are made up of tiny structures called cells and it is the structure of these cells that we shall learn in this chapter. History of the cell Robert Hooke, an Englishman, first discovered the cell in 1664 while examining a slice of cork under a microscope. A microscope is an instrument that is used to produce an enlarged image of an object. It was much later that scientists discovered that all living things are made up of cells. Structure of the cell Take an onion and cut it into several pieces. Take a fleshy part of it. You will see a thin papery layer on the concave side. Hold the side towards you and break the piece. Tear off the thin peel. Place a small piece of this peel on a glass slide. Put a drop of water and cover it with a cover slip. Observe it under a microscope. What do you see? You will observe small chamber-like structures which are called cells. These are plant cells. Make a drawing of the structure. Nucleus Nucleus is the most important part of a cell. It is usually spherical or oval in shape. It controls all the vital functions of the cell. It is made up of the nuclear membrane, nucleoplasm, nucleolus and chromosomes. The nuclear membrane surrounds the nucleus and separates it from the cytoplasm. It is permeable and controls the passage of materials through and from the nucleus. The nucleoplasm or nuclear sap makes up the body of the nucleus. It is denser than the cytoplasm. The nucleolus is a spherical body in the nucleus. It is composed of the nucleoprotein RNA ribonucleic acid. It is responsible for protein synthesis. Unicellular and multicellular. Living organisms are made up of one or many cells. Organisms made up of a single cell are called unicellular organisms. Examples of unicellular organisms include amoeba, paramecium, euglena and bacteria. In a unicellular organism, a single cell performs all the vital activities like feeding, movement, respiration, reproduction, etc. Organisms made up of many cells are called multicellular organisms. Most plants and animals that we see around us are multicellular. Levels of organization In multicellular organisms, cells represent the lowest levels of organization. Other levels of organization include tissues, organs and organ system. The organ systems get together to complete a living organism as shown. Organism to the biological world. The levels of organization from a cell to an organism represent the cellular level or organization. At the higher level, an individual forms the base of the biological world. Since an individual may be made up of one or millions of cells, a cell is called the fundamental unit of life. Starting with an organism, higher levels of organization may be represented as follows. Organism An organism forms the base of the organization. For example, a human being. Population Population refers to a group of individual organisms of the same species living in the same geographical area. For example, all human beings living in a locality. Community A community refers to a group of plants and animals living and interacting with one another in a specific region under relatively similar environmental conditions. For example, all plants and animals living in a locality. Ecosystem An ecosystem is the sum total of all living and non-living factors air, water, temperature, etc. in a region. Biosphere 
all ecosystems on earth taken together form the biosphere this includes ecosystems such as a pond ecosystem terrestrial ecosystem and so on cell shape and size there are different types of cells in a multicellular organism each having specific role to play the shapes and sizes of cells depends on the specific function they perform this is illustrated as shown nerve cells carry messages from and to different parts of the body hence they possess long fibers and are elongated in shape muscle cells help in movement through contractions and expansions hence they are thin and long skin cells cover a large area hence they are flat in shape variation in size cells are very small in size in fact most cells are so small that they cannot be seen with the naked eye cell size is measured in micrometers a micrometer is a unit for measuring very minute lengths 0.1 micrometer is equal to 1/10000th micrometer ostrich egg an ostrich egg is made up of a single cell it is 170 micrometer in diameter and is the largest known cell on the other hand a mycoplasm bacterium a unicellular organism is just about 0.1 micrometer in size viewing cells most cells are so tiny that we need a powerful optical device to view them we know that a microscope produces an enlarged image of an object It is thus a very useful device for viewing the internal structure of cells and tissues. The object to be viewed under a microscope is generally referred to as the specimen. A thin sheet of glass called a microscope slide is used to hold a small sample of the specimen. A generalized cell. Though different types of cells differ in shape and size, all of them have a basic structure. referred to as the generalized cell structure a cell has both living and non-living parts the living parts of the cell that have a definite shape structure and function are called organelles the main part of a generalized cell are a cell membrane b cytoplasm and c nucleus The outer covering of a cell is called the cell membrane through which substances can enter or leave the cell. The cell membrane is also called the plasma membrane. The nuclear membrane is a thin membrane that separates the nucleus from the cytoplasm. A semi-solid substance called the nucleoplasm fills up the nucleus. The cytoplasm is a jelly-like fluid which fills up the part of the cell between the cell membrane and the nucleus it has several organelles embedded in it the nucleus is considered to be the brain of the cell it is a membrane bound cell organelle nucleolus is a round granule inside the nucleus a network of fibrous material called chromatin fibers is present inside the nucleolus chromosomes contain dna deoxy ribonucleic acid that is responsible for passing hereditary characteristics from one generation to another cell organelles the figure shows a labeled diagram of a generalized cell golgi apparatus also called golgi bodies are made up of tubules vesicles and vacuoles they are responsible for the secretion of chemical substances like enzymes hormones and proteins ribosomes are small granules scattered all over the cytoplasm they act as sites of protein synthesis mitochondria are tiny spherical or rod like bodies they act as sites of energy production and are therefore called the power houses of the cell vacuoles are fluid filled spaces enclosed in a membrane they store excess water useful minerals pigments and many other substances endoplasmic reticulum is a network of tubules and channels 
it is involved in the synthesis, storage and transport of cell products. Centrosome It is located near the nucleus in animal cells. Plant cells do not have centrosomes. The main function of centrosomes is to initiate and regulate cell division. Plastids These are present in plant cells only. The plastids contain certain pigments which have a specific role to play in the functioning of the plant. Lysosomes They are present in animal cells only. Lysosomes contain enzymes that are capable of digesting cells and a variety of intra- and extracellular materials. In times of emergency, lysosomes burst and destroy the cell. Hence, they are also called suicide bags of the cell. Differences between a plant cell and an animal cell are tabulated on the screen. The shape of the cells. The shapes of cells also show great variations. Some cells are oval while others are elongated. The cell of amoeba is irregular in shape. Shapes of various plant and animal cells are shown in the figure. Generally, the shape of the cell is correlated to its function. Plant tissues. Epidermal tissue. Cells forming the epidermal tissue are found as a thin outer lining on leaves, stems, roots, flowers and fruits. Epidermal cells are spherical, oval or polygonal in shape. A prominent nucleus is present and the cell wall is thin. There is plenty of protoplasm in these cells. Conducting tissues Transport of water and food to different parts of the plant is one of the main functions of plant tissues. There are two types of conducting tissues in plants. Xylem, which transports water and minerals absorbed by the roots to the leaves. Phloem, which transports the food made by the leaves to the other parts of the plant. Animal tissues. Blood is also a type of tissue and is made up of cells. Blood is a fluid vascular tissue and contains the blood cells. It consists of plasma, the extracellular fluid, ECF, and solid corpuscles or cells. If a slide of blood smear is viewed under a microscope, one would find blood to be made up of three kinds of cells, namely the white blood cells, the red blood cells, and the platelets. The different types of blood cells differ from one another in shape and structure and can be easily distinguished from one another. The red blood cells carry oxygen to all parts of the body. The white blood cells help to fight infections. Blood platelets help in the formation of blood clot. Growth and cell division. Have you ever wondered how a small baby grows into an adult? Growths in living organisms occur as a result of increase in the number of cells in the body. The process by which cells reproduce is called cell division. During cellular division, the nucleus divides first and then division of cytoplasm takes place. During nuclear division, the nucleus enlarges and the nuclear membrane disappears. This is followed by the splitting of nucleus into two halves. The two halves are called daughter nuclei.